is uh, called What's New in Redis 2.2. Um, and I'm going to cover for a bit the, the optimizations we've been making to uh, the existing code in Redis uh, uh, 2.0. And um, I would like to see another <laughs> show of hands, maybe, I hope it will be the last time, but uh, who of the people that are actually using Redis already upgraded to 2.0 in production? Okay, that's, so that's about the same, great. Uh, because for uh, the people who are using 2.0, uh, 2.2 uh, will have, have a number of significant uh, benef benefits, uh, which I will uh, line out in, the, in, the, uh, in, in this talk. So uh, to start out, who am I? Because most people know, okay, uh, Salvatore, of course, creator of Redis. I started contributing in March, so I'm a newcomer for, the, for that matter. Um, I live in Groningen, in the Netherlands, where I uh, also uh, attend the, the university still, and I do all my uh, Redis-related work. And uh, my work on Redis is also uh, backed by uh, VMware, who I also, with, at this occasion, would like to thank for uh, flying me and Salvatore over here to, uh, yeah, to attend this evening uh, here in London. So, um, what's, what's going to be new in 2.2? Uh, uh, you've seen in 2.0 uh, a number of new things. The hash comments, the VM, uh, well, those are the two major things actually. I'm, for, I'm forgetting a lot of things. Anyways, <laughs> those, are, those were the two, two major, mo major new things in, uh, in uh, 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 2.0. And those are, uh, you, can, you can call them, yeah, those are straightaway features. So what we have lined up for 2.2 uh, isn't really a bunch of features. But more uh, on the on the side of the of the efficiency of Redis, uh, improving throughput, uh, looking at memory efficiency, because when you have a reasonably sized Redis instance running, it can quickly consume consume uh, a lot of data. Instances using uh, the full 32 gigabit of uh, commodity servers nowadays are not uncommon. So, improving the the memory footprint of Redis is is uh, quickly a very very big win. Uh, the first improvement is, uh, is on lists. So I'm going to take you over a little bit of uh, Redis Internals 101. This uh, piece of, uh, uh, this type that, of this struct is one node in a linked list. And that is used every time you use an L push or L pop or whatever. Any list command uh, uses more or less these list nodes. So when you have a list, you have consecutive <coughs> list nodes. There's a, a pref pointer who points to the previous node and the next pointer who points to the next node. As simple as that. The nice thing of this approach is that you can have uh, O1, or sorry, that's uh, time complexity. You can have uh, uh, in constant time do a push on either side or pop on either side of, of the list. And that is very good because it scales from one element in the list to a billion ele elements in the list. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. The only thing is, um, it's very cool to have uh, O1 uh, access, uh, but at what <coughs> cost? So the pointer overhead that you just saw, this was it was a pointer to a previous node, a next node, and a pointer to a value. On 64-bit systems, that's already 24 bytes. That's only used for yeah, what? What actually metadata? Metadata. So. This pointer overhead can have a uh, can be a con uh, considerable factor of the data you are actually storing. And I try to uh, visualize this in, in, in this current in this graph. I set out the, the, the payload size of the different elements in the list to uh, the the efficiency. And the efficiency was done by taking the uh, the actually uh, used number of bytes, the use memory, divided by the memory for your, for your total payload. So what you see here is that for very small values, the, so um, say 32-bit uh, values in your, in your list, the efficiency is extremely low. And that's exactly where we uh, decided to, uh, to take a look at and, and improve. So and that's where we introduced the zip list. Some of you that have uh, played around with uh, 2.0 and mainly the advanced configuration stuff may, may have noticed something called the zip list, uh, the zip, sorry, the zip map. 
And this is actually uh, um, the zip list is a concept that uh, has more or less the same principle, being that you instead of having all these pointers pointing to each other and have the uh, uh, constant, constant, constant time put and uh, uh, put and put pop and push from the list to pack all the values in a single contiguous uh, space and just use the, the, the me uh, moving memory around, uh, reallocating memory uh, for a bit to make sure the list has, has the same order as, uh, yeah, as it would with the, with the regular pointers. So um, imagine that where you first had the, the different pointers linking to each other, now you have something like this where you have a header, you have a value header, you have a value, another value header, etc. The values do, no, don't need to be uh, of the same size and this, this can, uh, can grow pretty large. So what do we actually gain by using this, this technique? Because it adds of course a lot of complexity and uh, yeah, we don't want to add complexity for the sake of complexity, so what, what, what's the gain? Well, uh, this uh, graph shows that if you have items of some, somewhere in the range of uh, 16 bytes, the memory footprint of using zip lists over regular lists is uh, eight, times, eight times better. So where you previously would have a list of say 116 byte elements it, and it would store a gigabyte of memory, it should now only use, use somewhere in the range of uh, 120 megabytes of memory. Uh, and well, memory is still uh, one of the bounding factors of, uh, of, of Redis deploy. So having, having this improvement uh, uh, can be a big gain. Only, of course, if the data that you, have, you store in your data sets is, a, is around, is around uh, ma matches these, these specs. So um, nothing comes for free, of course. So where the constant time pop and push were uh, available with, with, the, uh, with the struts, we don't have that with the zip lists because every time you do a, a push on the end of the list, you have to reallocate that entire block of memory. And even worse, when you do a push on the on the left of the list, you have to do a reallocate. You have to move the, all the bytes of memory a bit to the a bit to the right and place that new element there. So this this is computing power. This 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 this, this is the cost of having this large memory gain. But uh, let's let's take a look at the, at the at the real impact because because of things. Uh, like uh, cache locality, uh, all the new processors have, I don't know, two megabytes, four megabytes uh, uh, caches on them. They can simply perform all those operations, those expensive operations in the cache and turn out to be not that expensive after all. So what I did uh, was uh, try to do an, uh, an L push, so the worst case push for that matter, uh, with a 32 byte payload, which is the yeah. payload, what, uh, what is more or less the the, average, the, the uh, 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 optimal op optimal size for the for using the zip list, and simply looked at the time it took to uh, do a push against a list of this many elements. And as you see, when well around here even around thousand elements, you already start to see that it it's taking a little bit more more time. Here it's. It's doubling in the in the time needed to do a push, but this this trade-off is uh, is left up to you, because Redis doesn't make make the choice where where to where to put the the boundary of of uh, using zip lists, so you can configure them. Um, of course, we do provide defaults, uh, because we have noticed that zip list zip list encoding of a list is very good for small payload and a limited size, so up to for instance, 32 bytes of memory and up to uh, about a thousand elements in a the list, then the zip list gives you the, the, the best improvement over using regular list. So what we do is that once a list uh, crosses each uh, one of these thresholds, it's converted to a regular list and you have a constant time pop and push again. So it's, it's more, more or less of a, a hybrid approach. 
of course, you can tweak these settings, take, take a good look at your data, see, see what's going on, what, what's the average size of my, of my list elements, what's my average list length, and uh, take a look at your uh, required uh, throughput figures, etc. And that, that way you can tweak the Redis to uh, optimally use your memory while not having uh, a, a too large impact on the, on the performance. Okay, then um, I'm talking a little bit about memory efficiency on sets because for the hashes we have the zip maps, for the lists we have the zip lists, and for the sets we have a new thing in 2.2. Um, and it's actually very simple. Um, currently, sets are, you, uh, are backed by a hash table. A hash table looks something like this you have slots, <coughs> it's always a power of two, the number of slots, and every slot can hold. Uh, a linked list of values. Um, when you have a value, you apply a hash function that results in, a, in an integer <coughs> number. You take the modulo of the number of slots and you have the slot where the value would be. So that yields, regardless of the size of the hash table, a uh, constant time lookup. You can determine in constant time if a value is a member of the set or not. And that's exactly what the uh, s is member uh, comment in. Uh, in Redis, in Redis does. Um, again, the same, um, okay, yeah, so we have uh, constant time access and commonly, hold, commonly holds integers uh, for something like um, users one, two, and five are now online. Uh, okay, so you store one, two, and five in this, in this, in this set. Um, so again, what's the cost of has having this hash table? You have, of course, the hash slots, you have for every value uh, a, a pointer to the next value, a pointer to the value, uh, a pointer to the key, because sets can also have keys, etc. So it's overhead all over the place. Um, so knowing that most of the sets only hold integer values, uh, which we know are fixed width, eh, you have uh, 64, 32-bit uh, integers, they are fixed width, we apply a trick where we simply store the uh, sets composed only of integers as, again, a contiguous block of memory where the integers are ordered. So with an uh, ordered list of integers, you can apply a binary search. So instead of having to walk all the thousand elements in a thousand element list to check if an element is, um, is actually a member of that uh, set, you only have to do log and or log I don't know what, what it uh, resolves to, I think uh, maybe 10 steps or so. Um, while log n is not a constant time, due to again something, uh, uh, again the cache locality, it can in fact be a very, uh, very uh, good uh, solution to this problem. What's the gain of using it? Uh, the gain is pretty good because the hash tables do have a real lot of overhead. And uh, yeah, what you do in insets is you only store the data. So yeah, there there is very very little overhead, and it's always always more than uh, ten times the, the uh, ten times less memory footprint on the insets than on the regular regular sets. And the flapping wave you you, you see here is due to <coughs> uh, rehashing, which is also a thing that needs to be done from time to time which I don't go into for now. Okay, um, with the zip list we have this uh